What's up guys, welcome back. I've gotten a few requests, requests. Lips, teeth, tip of the tongue. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a makeup playtime. I have gotten a lot of requests to do this kind of video and I didn't even really know it was a video style. I've just heard Hannah talk a lot about how she does it on her own time. I do it on my own time. But mainly I wanted to use this as an opportunity or just like a category of video to revisit everything that I reviewed this month. It's kind of a nice recap and try something different with the products than I achieved in the initial review. So I have the Isamea palette sitting here. I have the Anastasia palette sitting here. I have all the new stuff that I got from Victoria Beckham Beauty. I also am kind of filling in a little bit with some new things that I'm getting my head around for other videos. So we'll touch on those as well. But mainly, like, I think the whole idea is just that we don't really know where it's going yet. I just know I want to look like a smoke show by the end of it, you know? So yeah, I hope that this is what you guys had in mind when you were requesting this kind of video, but let's go ahead and jump in. So I already have some SkinCeuticals moisturizer on and I have my Tula Mineral Magic SPF on. I'm going to be using the number one day Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation today in B10. It's just been my favorite for the coverage level that I want, the finish that I want, summer skin, kind of halfway between being dry and being a little bit sweaty. It's just a really, really good foundation for everything that I need right now. That's the Chanel. Uh, I just, I just dig it. Okay. And I'm going to go in with my Kosas concealer. Now, is this new? Absolutely not. But like I picked this back up out of my collection, kind of shopped it out of my stash for the first time in a really long time this month and like haven't been able to put it down. I just like forgot how satisfying it is to have this lightweight level of coverage. And it's just so perfected looking, not even because I'm just like, oh, those are imperfections and they're wrong. It's like, no, it's just because I'm going to put effort into the rest of my look. And I feel like sometimes those things can be distracting looking if I'm really exaggerating another part of my face. So sometimes you just want to look snarched, you know? Speaking of things that rhyme with snarched, because of course we were, right? I realize why I love the Chanel smell so much. It smells like the spray starch that my mom used to use on our clothes when, when we were kids. Not all of our clothes, but like when she ironed, she always used spray starch. I think it was called magic sizing. It smells exactly like magic sizing and it makes me so nostalgic. Anybody? All right, we're a touch blown out. I'm gonna turn this down one notch. I have a couple of new things here. I know we're not like, we have not yet shopped my stash. <laughs> Those just happen to fall a little bit later in my routine. So this is the Prism Libre from Givenchy. And did I get influenced? Yes, I did. Of course I did by my good friend, Amanda Z. She was just like, this is so beautiful. And also I think Hannah had her eye on this. And so it is this little four container. This comes in a lot of shades. This is like the fairest kind of most neutralizing one for my skin tone. And it's a blue, a green, a pink, and a purple. And it's all these powders that you just kind of like, you know, swirl together. You know, you think of it as maybe like the meteorites from Givenchy, Givenchy from Guerlain or something like that. And it's just, it's very like aesthetically pleasing the way that it looks when you pour it out in the pan because you get all the colors. And then it's just a lovely kind of neutralizing texture as well. A little bit of luminosity to it, but it's not, it's not like the meteorites. They're a little bit shimmery. It's a little, I don't know, it's the thing is I'm gathering my feelings on it. I like the color, I like what the color does, but I have not decided whether I like the texture of it yet. It might be a little too mattifying. Time will tell, time will tell. So that's something that I am testing right now. And something I mentioned in my cream bronzer video, which you guys have no idea how good it feels to finally have given birth to that video. It has been so long coming that I'm just like, have this world, have the spreadsheet, have my review. It's done, <laughs> it's done. And I'm happy with the way that it turned out, but I did end up getting this. This is actually for a video called, I think, you know, working title. Like it's another TikTok made me buy it of just like viral products on TikTok and whether or not they're worth it because TikTok has been really like resurrecting a lot of products that most of us have already like used and tried and passed on and whatever. Cause I know every generation does this, but I'm very like, Stop acting like you invented that, okay? We've been here the whole time. Anyway, this is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. I really thought that it was like 
an effect that they were putting on the image on the Sephora website that made it look like, oh, it's shifting in the light, you know? No, it's actually a gradient. So it's like you have highlight, yellow, gold, bronze, and then like neutral, which is, you know, kind of like a contour. And I find the way I prefer to use this, because I did try and use it as like a, a bronzer at first, it's actually better on me as like a really easy, almost like, intelligent like smart contour where it's like I put it on and it just contours where I need it and I don't have to like draw individual like lines on my face and worry about blending them too much it's like the perfect brontour basically I'm very very impressed with Mario he finally got his feet under him and was able to put out his own brand instead of having to collaborate with KKW and it just sings the the textures the very like veiled pigments, you know, and the actual colors that he chooses, all the undertones and everything, his vision comes to life. And that's, that's kind of the point. Do you see how that's just like, you didn't see any lines going on on my face, but it's, it's just something that kind of does it without showing its work. Isn't that wild? And you're really technically supposed to use that with this and I'm going to because I am going to be working back up to using the Victoria Beckham cream blush by the way the top Victoria Beckham I got it on sale <laughs> uh net a -porte, like really really on sale and yes thank you for asking it is my favorite thing I've ever owned so <laughs> like I feel like someone needs to take me to a tennis match in, in cooler weather, which I don't even know if those really exist, and put me in the box seats and I'm going to be in my expensive sunglasses with a glass of champagne. Like it is, it just makes me feel like a rich girl, okay? It makes me so happy. I mean, I guess like she's Posh Spice, that makes sense, right? But I am not immune to the fantasy. So here I have the salt, uh, okay, here we go. Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in light. So these are all in light. I now have all of his bronzers in light because I I believe in him, okay? I just believe in his ability to make a bronzer that really, really works on me. And this is like a two, two step, one way ticket to smoke show land. Cause like, I'm already just looking like I just got off of like vacation, right? It's just giving me this like healthy, not overdone kind of glow. I don't really know how to explain it. it. I think it's because none of it is too warm. Or I guess it almost just kind of like takes the idea of a bronzer and turns it on its head because it's like everything bronzer-ish tends to be a bronze color. And this is just kind of like a neutral, almost like a peach, you know? And it's so sheer. This kind of is where he starts to cross over into Patrick Ta territory of just making a really, really sheer color that works so well for bringing powdered skin back to looking like skin and makes you think differently about how to apply your makeup. All right, finally, we're into something that I actually used this month that I'm really actually enjoying and not getting as much use out of as I would like just because I've been trying so many new things. And this is Cheeky Posh from Victoria Beckham in Fame. Such a pretty color. It's like this beautiful lilac. Like it's like a intense lilac. See? Ooh, yes. But with all that bronze, I don't really feel like I want to go just absolutely crazy with blush because I feel like it already is a bit of a blush, you know? I just kind of want a nice little hint of something healthy. This is a very, very dry formula. So I don't ever buff it. I just tap, tap, tap. But I love that it's kind of a dry formula. It kind of goes, you know, since it's a dry cream, you can kind of call it a hybrid formula. And it goes on really nicely. Just really, really well with a brush. And this color is just so seasonless. This is just something that looks organic on my skin regardless. Now, Something that people said that they wanted to see out of the Isamea palette was more use of the greens. Now I did one on my Instagram that is 
green, green, green. Like I used literally every green in the palette on my eyes. You know, you can go to my Instagram, hey khaki, and look at that one. But I'm still gonna play in the greens today. We're just probably going to be a little bit more tame with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch all the greens here. Well, not all of them, just kind of the more chill ones. Like these over here, like believe it or not, that's green and like that's slime green. Like those are not the ones that I'm gonna be going with today. It's just interesting how they're all so beautifully sheer. I mean, not all of them, but all the ones that I just swatched. Ugh. Even though compared to the rest of them, it's not less necessarily like reading as green, green, green. I think that this is where I'm gonna start. I have a feeling I'm going to have trouble kind of building color saturation with this that's believable and looks nice on my skin. So I'm probably gonna have to like dip into the Anastasia palette or something to get a little more richness because these are, this palette's just a little bit spooky, okay? That's what it is. It's supposed to be, you know, this kind of industrial goth sort of thing and it's a vibe. And it's a little difficult to get out of that vibe sometimes unless you just wanna work with like one shadow, like it's gonna look the way that it looks. So let's see how far we can get with this while still staying in my um, self-designated smoke show area. I'm going to start with my 207 here, the Travel 207 from BK. And I'm dipping into this one, which is called Belt? Belt, okay, it's called Belt. Maybe I'll surprise myself today. So yeah, it is reading more gray than anything else. So I will probably wanna kind of richen it up because I wanna bring it into the rest of the look, but it's still just a very easy to control color. And for a lot of people that color is probably going to blend into your skin better than it does mine. My skin just doesn't love gray as a rule. I think it's important to kind of point out the difference, and I was talking to Amanda about this because she was wondering why she was like suddenly able to wear pastels when she thought that they would wash her out. She's like, does your artist brain have any like immediate thoughts on that? I said, I think it's actually mainly the difference between putting something on your skin that's opaque and putting something on your skin that's translucent. Because if you put something on your skin that's translucent, you're going to be having to think about how it's going to either cooperate or fight against your undertone. So it's like, that's what I talk about when I'm putting like, you know, a purple eyeshadow on or something. It's like, okay, if it's got a little bit of lilac in it, you're probably gonna see more pink than purple or blue because my skin's yellow is gonna cancel that out a little bit, like in a wash of color. But if you're putting something completely opaque on, you're then thinking about the contrast of the rest of your coloring versus that color. So if she's putting light blue on and she's got this really beautiful like red hair and this kind of like rich, you know, her skin tone's very, very similar to mine. I can wear blue, she can wear blue. Suddenly your eyeshadow becomes an accessory because you're not seeing skin through it anymore. And that's why it works. So a lot of times there's confusion in my comments about color theory as it pertains to that. I'm like, well, no, but that would make it pop. It's like, if they're next to each other, yes. If they are opaque and they're next to each other, yes. And you're comparing them. But if they're layered on top of each other, that's different. Does that make sense? I don't know. Color theory is very nuanced when it comes to being on your skin. And now the more that I look at this, the more it just, it looks, it looks nice. Hmm, 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 hmm. Where do we wanna go with this? I just don't think Isme is the mood that I'm in today. It is an entire mood. It's an entire mood. And sometimes that's just not the mood, but we are going to go green. So I am going to go, oh, with Hope from the Anastasia palette. See, and it's just such a more tame, color story, everything's just kind of muted down because it's just a different vibe, it's a whole different story. It's funny because when I talk about this palette, I talk about how that black kind of annoys me because it's like the darkest color in the palette. It's, I mean, it's black, it's dark, it's really dark. Somebody called it navy, I think. It's not navy, it's like very, very dark brown. But it is a palette that I end up reaching for a lot because I like the other colors in the palette so much and because I'm not always looking for variety you kind of find a comfort zone in a palette and you stick with it. And so this does have several comfort zones for me. It's just something that like the difference between like my personal use case and a review. And to me, that's kind of one of the most valuable things about a video like this is revisiting that and you know, giving you guys insight on how it's been working for me in my routine. So now I'm going into Liberty, which is this really pretty kind of soft olive. 
And I'm gonna use that to build opacity in the crease where that shade from Ismael was just not giving me the kind of like believable contour that I wanted. Oh my gosh, the shift on hope on brown eyes, come on. That's so good, that's so good, that's so good. Okay, I'm going to take Fleur, which is this really lovely, very like washed out rosy color. I'm gonna put that here because it's going to pull a little bit of that color from my cheeks up into my eye look and it'll make it look a lot more at home. Also, I did get a DM recently. Somebody said, you know, like, I know you've been accused in the past of basically doing the same format for your eyeshadow looks all the time and asking if I had a video where I actually explained that, you know, like what the actual diagram would be because just of the shape of my eyes. And really this diagram that I have developed for myself is derived mainly from certain videos that I watched of Wayne Goss talking about different eye shapes and how to flatter them with, with contour. But if you have deep set eyes that are you know, pretty round. I have pretty round eyes. They don't have any kind of like dip down or dip up or anything like that. They're just kind of round. They're close set, they're deep set, and, uh, and they're small. So the main thing is I focus from about there to here, kind of like ha like a quarter of the way in, a quarter of the way out, and like you can add more drama if you want, you know, on the, out on the outer side. That's where a really believable matte contour needs to be for me in order to kind of obscure the fact that this is the edge of my eye i would like it to just kind of disappear off into my eyelashes and make it look like my eye goes out a little bit further if i can and like a lot of times it's not about drawing on a new eyelid it's about just kind of obscuring it and blurring it and making it just like oh where did it go? Who knows, you know? <laughs> and that's also why you'll see me, I pull my eyeliner straight out because straight out on me does tend to still kind of look upwards for my eyes, but it elongates them instead of if I were to actually do a really like exaggerated cat eye where it like, you know, curls up, you'd just be hyper aware of how small my eyes were. It would just look like a really, really strong terminus to the end of my eye and it would just, you know, kill all the work that I had done. I then, for about this portion of my eye and never too far up, I use like a, a shimmer of some persuasion, typically something that, mm, either has a little bit of shimmer so that the light hits it, or if I'm doing an all matte look, I will do warmth on the lid, something relatively warm, because that's gonna pop towards you. And it just, again, helps that illusion of the, the eyelid looking very luxurious and large, right? And then I don't put anything really dark on this inner kind of quarter of my eye. I try to highlight that or just leave it kind of blank with, you know, regular face powder, because again, we're kind of softening the idea of where my eye begins and ends, and I would like them to look a little bit wider set if I could. I was not blessed with super wide set eyes. That, and then when, when it comes to like up here, this is actually where most of my real estate is. A lot of people have like, you know, you look at Tati or Robbie D. Christie or somebody, they don't have much right here. They'll have these huge eyelids. And if you're trying to mimic one of their looks on eyes like mine, it just doesn't work because you're trying to like fiddle all this work into this tiny little area on the eyelid. And then up here, they don't really have to worry about that because they just do like a brow highlight and they're done. And a lot of it's obscure by, you know, their eyelashes because it's just, you know, their eyelashes cover so much of that. But for me, I'm kind of like um, Nikki Tutorials where, you know, there's, there's a lot of room here to do things. And so I do have to make sure that I have addressed that area and made it, again, a little warm because you want it to kind of come forward. And also that I don't take my brow highlight too low because it will just kind of smush my eye. So I'm really careful to like push my brows up and keep my brow highlight really tight to my eyebrow and make sure that this gradient is pulled out almost onto my temple from up here because again, we're taking the eye, we're using the real estate that we have to like make it look like they're a little bit bigger and wider set. So 
when you see me use a color like this, it's basically like if I were taking the, what would I call it, like a transition shade, but mm, it's like a, a comfort zone shade, right? Of something that it's like, I'm happy working with that and I don't feel like it's ever gonna be too much. And then I don't mind like working on top of it with a crease shade or with my brow highlight or something, but like I bring it almost all the way. Like my brush is almost all the way up to my, my eyebrow there because you almost always end up with like a little bit of product left on your brush. And you see, I'm like literally pulling it onto like the side wall of my face because there's just so, I have, I have huge temples. <laughs> Massive temples. I just have a lot of room from here to here, you know, and it's it's all about kind of like understanding Your face and also kind of what you're trying to go for but I mean if you look at somebody even like Kylie Jenner Her eyes are not as big as you think they are. They're not and they're also pretty close set and she manages to make them look enormous and it's a lot of just shadow and light trickery so I just kind of observe. I observe as I go and that's that's kind of the diagram of it for me. So now we have done kind of the outer edge. I'm probably going to do more and then up here and then I've also done kind of my main color right on my eyelids and when I do something that is darker on my eyelids like this that isn't just like you know playing right into my natural skin tone. Um, I will usually also take it down underneath my eyes because again I have tons of real estate. Between my cheeks and my eyes I have tons of real estate. I think it's about to storm. And it makes it easy and also very flattering to take something like Hope, which is, you know, the <laughs> the shade that I have on my eyelids. It sounds like my kid, my kid I, I taught him instead of whining to say help. And he just goes, help, 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 help. And I'm like, help with what? And he goes, peace, peace, peace. That means please. <laughs> he doesn't tell me what. He just goes, peace, peace, peace. And he also has this new thing where you go, oh, do you want some more milk? And he goes, it's not, yes, it's yeah. cutest thing in the world. He's the cutest thing in the world. I'm obsessed with him. So yeah, taking a, taking a little bit of hop and <laughs> putting it under my eyes. I'm using the Sephora 18 brush. Another thing that was influenced directly by Amanda. But it's so nice. It's such like a perfect little ball. She's smoky. Okay, so. I didn't realize this was going to go into tutorial mode, but here we are. Do you see how my eyes look really flipping round right now? They look really round. And there is not a shade really in this palette or in the Isamea palette that's going to give me the most believable outer shadow, you know? Like I'm using Liberty right now it's not giving me the illusion that I want. So it's like, I need something that's like really, that's what I always go for. I'm not even sure that it's that cool tone. It's just like a really good kind of like washed out brown made from match made from the Monica Romance palette from Hindash, okay? He just knows what he's doing. And it just adds the slightest, the slightest Believable shadow right there. And I will also, hmm, I think I'm gonna use the fairest shade there, Alter, and just blur right on top of everything. It's so important to kind of understand the nature of different formulas because like knowing that I can take something like a pale cream colored shadow in Hindash's palette and put it all over the top of everything and that it's not gonna just like kill the local color that I've worked for because his formula is so sheer, makes a huge difference. This is also kind of, <laughs> I'm drunk with power on the whole like makeup playtime thing because I'm pulling from three different palettes right now. <laughs> and I also wanna replace a little bit of hope, just a little bit. I got a little bit of hope, like a soap on a robe, sweeter than sour, getting thinner by the hour of fun, fast, and I'm running out of gas. I got too many songs living in my head. This is number two Space Age Star Surfer from Kaleidos. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What? That is a very 
interesting highlight right there. It's a little bit pink, it's a little bit icy, and it's a little bit weird, and we're gonna go for it. Actually, 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 this was a trick that I shared on my Instagram, and somebody was like, why don't you just use some Fix Plus? You're not supposed to do that because you might get an eye infection. Fine. I'm not coming to your house and licking your makeup, but you take it and you wet it, and this is just the one that's on the end of my Victoria Beckham one. I have put way too much on there. And you just tippity tap that in there, and it gives you much better precision application. It doesn't get everywhere, especially when you have really deep set eyes like I do. Because it'll get everywhere. Me trying to, have you ever seen Jackie Ina reach her pinky in and do it? I'm like, I do not have the real estate to be sticking my pinky. I don't have room for my pinky in there. Like that's just not gonna happen. You know what I think this needs? I think this needs Starlight from VB. Just a little bit. Bring it back into like a little bit of gold territory. Just smash it all together, you know? Smash it. Oh man. Starlight on brown eyes, okay? Okay? I, it's irresistible. It's so pretty, that gold. <gasps> I am gonna do just regular brows, but I'm gonna use the Ismea Brow Gel because it is great. It's just great, okay? I'm gonna do one of these first. Magic radiance. when I bought all the stuff from Anastasia to try with the palette and I loved it so much that I just immediately took it with me in the car and then I lost it to my car seats and I finally found it again and I've made two different reels about how sparkly this lip gloss is but I'm going to be using this today to show you guys and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amber Sparkle Lip Gloss. It is absolutely the most glittery thing I've ever put on my lips and it is enchanting. So this is my lip liner in khaki. Guaranteed to make me feel like a smoke show. Make this go viral on TikTok. <laughs> All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Smells like vanilla. So right when you push your lips together, you can really feel the glitter and the glitter kind of comes to the surface, but as it just kind of like chills on your lips, it just takes on this really lovely sheen of its own and then the glitter kind of sinks back and it's just this really, really beautiful illusion of like plumpness and it doesn't have any plumping properties to it. There's nothing uncomfortable, there's nothing minty. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup here. I'm actually just gonna use my Kosas powder because this is just easier. And I am still not sold. I'm not completely sold on the Givenchy being worth that astounding price when something like the Kosas exists. I still never ended up even doing a brow highlight. Yep, something's missing and her name is Blush. Yeah, I'm going to include final thoughts in this video on kind of how my feelings have or have not changed since using these things for longer since I initially reviewed them. Now we need to decide what blush I want to use. Why is it always you? It's always you, isn't it? It's always flirtatious from Pat McGrath. You know what? It's because it's great, okay? Okay? She'll never upstage you. She'll never steal the show. 
She will only ever make you look better than when she found you. Let's use some Isamea brow gel here. This is like some of the fastest brow gel I've ever used. My hair, stop it. Easy peasy. And I didn't even use the little tail in at that time. You can really, I mean, you can get any old shape you want out of your brows with this stuff. Now, because I used the Makeup by Mario bronzer, I feel like I didn't do a specific contour. So I am going to do a specific contour moment to give me the snatch effect that I truly want. Where's my daggum gosh darn diddling brush? From Fred Siegel. This is the Beauty Pie. It's a Beauty Pie brush. That's, it's a Beauty Pie brush. They did just send me some of their new bronzers though and that made me really happy. I need to try those soon. That looks a little bit dark. I think that I can use a little bit of the Makeup by Mario and just blendy blendy. I'm kind of like turning into Tati, aren't I? More is more, but like that was the look today. I like doing lots of different looks. I like having many different, Oh no, oh, oh, that's valuable to know. This was the wrong brush to use for that because look what it did when I picked this up, the highlights on the top. So it's like almost, <laughs> maybe that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to like distribute your highlight, your bronzer and your contour all like that. If that's what it's supposed to do, I hate it. <laughs> I hate that concept that makes me so angry. Oh no. Come on, Pat McGrath for the win. That's so bad. Oh my God, I hate that. Why would it do, ugh, no. If, if what you're wanting is what I was describing, don't dip and tap like I did, swirl. Swirl it together because that was a disaster. That, um, that threatened to ruin everything that I had just worked for. And I still feel like the Givenchy didn't give me enough like nice brightness and mattification under my eyes. Enough blur, really. Blur is what I want. Maybe if I just applied a whole bunch more of it, I probably would, but. There's something about opening a compact that's so much easier than like pulling out that thing and unscrewing the lid and tapping it out and swirling it together. It's just like, bleh, you know? I am extremely muddy because of that moment. I'm gonna give my cheeks one more spritz because I need, I need, I'm gonna use just regular Fix Plus. I'm getting high maintenance here. Maybe that's why this is called Makeup Playtime because it doesn't always go right. Yeah, trying that new Makeup by Mario, like that, that threw things off at the end. I now have this like awkward highlight right here that I was not anticipating. And I'm looking real muddy mucky on my cheeks. Oh, that's not the vibe. Shocking, shocking disaster at the last second. I just ended up looking way more made up than I meant to. I was going for made up, but like that's just, that's cakey. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to like literally distribute a, an icy white highlight on my cheek like that. I hate it. I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm just saying like that was an unfortunate turn of events. And I'm glad that I was able to show it to you guys because it's just makeup and I can wash it off, but it might make a difference as to whether or not you want to buy it. So let's touch real quickly on final thoughts as it pertains to every product I just put on my face and whether or not my feelings have changed on them recently. So even as far back as the Chanel, my feelings have changed recently on this because I have gotten more into this level of coverage and the wear time is really there, the performance is really there. I'm more into kind of a luxury face of makeup right now. I fall in and out of love with like the, you know, the really, really like dewy freckles showing through kind of like just barely there looks and the I want to look immediately snatched but also it not to be something that's wearing me. This is such an agreeable formula and I know Ingrid loves it too, which means that it works for different skin types because she's not like me, she's not super dry. The fact that like we can both get use out of it you know, I'm not gonna say it's gonna work for like the oiliest of skin tones. It's not satin matte or anything, but it's a really, really beautiful kind of like skin-like formula with a really great amount of coverage. I love the amount of coverage and my skin really likes the actual formula. The Kosas, I'm coming back around to it. Again, it's like that level of coverage and the way that it cooperates with the Kosas powder, like they really, 
are a dynamic duo. They were meant to be. And just the way that it blurs everything, it makes everything that it touches looks younger, <laughs> you know? Cause it's got that caffeine in it and everything. So yeah, big fan and glad that I pulled this back out because this is 1.5C and I've been a lot more into complexion matches as far as under eye concealer and stuff, less the, you know, uber, uber bright look. And I'm really, really glad that I kind of switched shades because it made me fall back in love with this formula. Wow, um, okay. Hey, I hope that this was kind of a cautionary tale with this. Granted, I'm sure that anybody who has actually read the instructions and doesn't buy makeup at the insane cursory clip that I do would have already known what was going to happen here. But to me, I don't know, I kind of thought of it as something that no matter what, it was just gonna kind of like, you know, mix on the skin and like this was gonna be more sheer, almost like a finishing powder. It is an icy highlight. Beware, beware. So yeah, just in the future, I'm gonna mix them all together but it was just not what I was expecting. It was just not what I was expecting. But you know, this continues to be exactly what I expect it to be, and that is the cream one. It's just this beautiful, sheer, kind of balmy formula that makes skin look like skin again and applies just complaintlessly on top of, you know, any, any texture, bare skin, powder, what have you. Obviously tap, don't like buff this on over powder, but it's really, really intuitive to use. Regrowth, are you in the chat today? Oh yeah, regrowth is in the chat today. I get it. I get that these are supposed to go together and they work nicely together, but just let let my tail be a, the cautionary one that's like, if you're not looking for an icy highlight, don't apply it the way that I did at the end. <laughs> um, my feelings will never change on Flirtatious from Pat McGrath unless she discontinues it, in which case I will disown her forever. I'm just kidding. This is such a good color and such a good formula and I will pan it and I am currently, I'm just on my way to like destroying this package. I, I love this stuff so much. I love it. Mwah. The ABH palette, like I said, the feelings that have changed here are that from a review standpoint, yes. I think that some users might want to get their head around the fact that there are not a lot of medium shades in this because if you are, especially if you're like a deep skin tone, you really only have one option and that is to like mix that deep color in with other things and it's sort of a one trick pony, it kind of takes over. But if you're complected like me and you're probably not gonna use that color that much and the rest of them like really, really appeal to you, you're gonna find some really strong comfort zones in here. I still had to pull out something. I had to pull out the Hindash palette, which I don't mind doing, but like I still had to, to like get the look that I was going for as far as like the outer corner contour and everything. I'm used to doing that, but again, I just wanna say this isn't a perfect palette, but I found my groove with it. And some of these shades, especially the shimmers like Hope and Lily, keep me coming back to it over and over and over again, because they're just, unbelievable and really great on brown eyes. I would say that for the Isamea palette, I don't wanna say you can't get like an everyday wearable look out of this because I don't know what your everyday wearable is, but I think that the word to describe this is spooky. It's just a little bit spooky. And if spooky is not what you're into, you can do some really cool drama with this, but there are probably other palettes out there that might excite you more, that you might get more use out of. This is a specific mood. I love having and don't feel any pressure in having specific moods that I'm not always in the mood for in my collection. I love that it's like when I'm in that mood, I know exactly what to reach for. And I always said this, I think that there's something to be said for products that are very specifically for a certain customer and not trying to be for everybody because when it's trying to be for everybody, most of the time it doesn't really end up like knocking it out of the park for anyone. So the fact that Isamea had such a clear vision and made something that I didn't want to wear today because I wanted to look like this, but that I have my days where I want that just splashed all over my eyes as much as I possibly can. For me, that's like a high of a compliment as I can give for something that's meant to be so conceptual is that like, you almost can't get outside the concept with it, you know? The Isamea Brow Gel, you guys saw how quickly that happened. This is great. Again, it's like the difference between the Givenchy and the Kosas, where, you know, I'm looking at these two things and I'm going, well, which one am I going to pull out? The performance so far, so far, is equal enough, I might still like Kosas more, that like, just the thought process of like, I'm gonna pop open a compact versus unscrewing and like taking all the steps to dispense this onto my face. 
I'm always gonna go Kosas. That's how I feel about the Isamea in comparison to something like, you know, a, a brow gel that, I don't know, like the Refi or something like that, where it's like kind of gluey and I'm gonna probably have to get like, get too much of it on in some places and it's gonna pull stuff off and things like that. Like the fact that I tap this on to the top of my eyebrows and then I get to kind of just make a decision on the fly of what I wanna do with this little comb and it's got two different tools in it. I don't know what it is about that, but it makes my, it makes it feel easier in my life than something like the Refi that's like, you know, a Swiss army knife of different things I can do. So I also just really, really dig the look of it. It's so glossy. I love a glossy brow because I love to fill my brows in, but then get that definition and to have the eyebrow then be something that's so defined and so like not blurry. I love it. I love the contrast. It's like how I love having a really, really glossy lip. And are you seeing how the glossy lip from ABH has gone from being a glitter bomb to being this thing that's like this lovely self-leveling formula that's very, very comfortable to wear, where the glitter has like really sunken down into my lips, like to the bottom of the gloss. And now it's just this gorgeous, plumped appearance. It's not like you dipped your face in craft glitter, you know? I dig it a lot. And as far as the Victoria Beckham products go, I really love this shade for what it is, Fame. And you know, you guys saw it go on and it's something that I think really helped this look, but I still don't see it as a standalone. I don't know why, it just can't fully pack the punch that I need, but it's okay. I feel like it's worth it because I like the shade so much. You know, if you're not like a super, super crazy bright blush person, absolutely, but I really think that like, it's it's incomplete without still putting a powder or something on top or something a little more saturated. But man, Starlight really set this look off, didn't it? I am so in love with her Lid Luster formula. It's, and she's just been dialing the shades in lately. And initially I had misgivings about this because I was like, it's not green. I thought it was gonna be green. And it's just this really perfect gold. And it makes my brown eyes pop. It like brings out the gold that's in my eyes, if there is any. It's greater than the sum of its parts, I think is, is what I'm trying to say. And for that reason, like I just keep coming back to it and it lives in my mind palace. And same goes for her cocoa liner, which is what I use in just about every video and I never mention it. So yeah, use the cocoa liner today and I also used my Thrive Mascara. I have misplaced, what you saw me looking for was my uh, eyelash curler. I have no idea where it is, but it's okay. I have enough kind of natural curl to my eyelashes and the brown mascara just makes everything look so much softer. So yeah, I think that this is all gonna kind of settle in and I'm gonna be able to like wear it for the rest of the day without feeling self-conscious, but the, the kind of cakiness on my cheeks and the way that the, the pores are, it's looking a little bit draggy saggy, not my favorite, not my favorite. And that's also a product of going cream powder, cream powder, which is what I did. That's what happens is you start to make this weird kind of emulsion and I pushed the limits of that. Anyway, uh, yeah, guys, make a playtime. Let me know if you like this format for a video because you get to kind of see my stream of consciousness. We get to play with things that you have not seen these looks from per se. I hope you all liked this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.